In this video, we're going to look at some of the data types that are available to us in SQL so we can then use them to create a table and add some rows to it. So we said that the values in a given column must all be of the same type. The numeric types include one for integers and one for real numbers. For non-numeric data, there's a date type, a time type, and then two different types for arbitrary sequences of characters, which are known in computer science as strings. And we're going to talk about both of those now in more detail. So the char type is used for fixed length strings of exactly a certain number of characters. And you specify that number n in parentheses when you specify the char type. And then var char n is used for variable length strings of up to n characters. And so we use var char for columns in which the values can have a wide range of possible lengths. For example, if we're defining a person table, we might use var char 64 for the person's name. And that would allow us to have up to 64 characters in the name. Similarly, we might use varchar 128 for the street address. We're allowing that to be longer, since addresses are often longer than names. And then varchar 32 for the city. Char 2 might make sense for the state, because we're going to use an abbreviation that is always two characters long. And so it makes sense to have a fixed length string for that column. Similarly, we might use char 5 for the zip code, which is always five digits. Now with zip code and with ID, you might wonder why we're using char. So we often use char for a person's ID, something like char 8. And the reason we do that, even though those things seem like they're numeric, is because every zip code has the same number of digits in it. Similarly, every ID has the same number of digits. And by using char, you're able to make sure that that's the case. In addition, if you have an ID or a zip code that begins with leading zeros, like the one that you see here, which is eight characters long, storing that in a char eight is going to keep the zeros. Whereas if you were to store it as an integer, you would not end up keeping those leading zeros. And so if you want to be able to have leading zeros and you want to have a fixed length, you're better off using char rather than integer. Now with both char and varchar, if the user tries to specify a value that has more than n characters, where n is the number that we specified when we listed the type, that value is going to be truncated. So for example, if we have a column of type char5, and the user attempts to put in a value with six characters, it's going to be stored with just the first five, and that sixth character will be truncated. If we have varchar10, and the user attempts to store computer science in that column, we're going to get just the first 10 characters. And notice the space counts as one of those characters. If the user tries to specify a value that is shorter than the specified length n, then the two types behave differently. With char n, the system will pad the value with enough spaces to get a length n, because chars are fixed length. They always have the same number of characters. Whereas with varchar, there is no padding added. It just keeps that shorter value, however many characters it happens to be. For example, with char5, if the user only specifies three characters, the system is going to pad with two extra spaces to bring us up to length 5. With varchar10, if we specify something with only four characters, it's going to be stored as only four characters. No padding is added. Now, when it comes to creating a new table, we have to use a create table command. It begins with the keywords create table. Then we specify the name of the table. And then in parentheses, we have a list in which we describe the columns. And we give the name of the column followed by its type, followed by a comma, then the name of the next column, its type, comma, etc and then you have the close parentheses and a semicolon. To create our simplified student table, we say create table student, open parentheses, then the name of the first column and its type, followed by a comma, name of the second column, its type, close parentheses, semicolon. 
Now it's important to note, after this command is executed, there's no actual data in there yet, right? The command creates an empty table that is then ready to have rows added to it. For the room table, which has three columns, the command to create it looks like this, create table room, open paren, name of the first column, its type, notice these IDs are only four digits long, so it's char four, second column name, which is name, and its type, comma, third column, which is capacity, its type, which is integer, and then close paren, semicolon. Now, we can specify the primary key of a table, and if there's only one column in the primary key, we can just put the words primary key right after the type of the column. But if the primary key contains more than one column, we're going to have to specify it separately. So if you remember, majors in had the combination of student ID and department name as its primary key. So here is the create table where we just specify the names and types of the columns, but then we would put an additional comma, and then we would say primary key, and in parentheses, the combination of columns that makes up that primary key. When specifying a foreign key, we need to specify the name of the foreign key itself and the name of the primary key to which it refers. So if you remember, majors in, both of its columns are foreign keys. Student ID refers to the ID column in student, and so we would specify that down here by saying foreign key, and then in parentheses, the name of the foreign key column itself, which is student underscore ID, and then the keyword references, and then we have the table name of the corresponding primary key, and then the column name in parentheses of that primary key. Similarly, the department name column in majors in refers to the name column in department, and we can go ahead and specify that using the same syntax. So foreign key department name references department parentheses name. And then we need the close parens and semicolon at the very end for the entire create table command. Once a table has been created, we can insert data into it. This is the syntax of the insert command. So let's say I have my room table already created. This command says that I want to insert a new row into the room table in which the values are these three values. And you have to specify the values in the same order in which the columns were specified when you created the table. So here I'm specifying a value for ID first, because that's the first column, then a value for name second, because that's the second column, and then the value for capacity, which is the third column. And you'll notice that non-numeric values have to be surrounded by single quotes, just like they are in select commands, whereas numbers do not need to be. Don't forget that ID is a char, so it needs quotes as well when I'm specifying a value because chars are non-numeric values. And then finally, it's worth noting that the DBMS is going to check our uniqueness constraints and our referential integrity constraints, and it won't let us insert a row if it violates one of those constraints. But in this case, I'm not violating, and so I end up with a new row in my room table.